We're in that season, WrestleMania season. And every year get to this time and I get more nostalgic about WrestleMania and what it's represented for me over so many years as a wrestling fan. How much I've looked forward to it over the years. How sometimes it's moved me to fantastic emotions and fantastic experiences. And then on the flip side, has let me down and really disappointed me. And there's certainly throughout the years, lots of great and wonderful WrestleMania moments. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the 10 WrestleMania moments that still piss me off the most. They still make me angry all these years later. Now, I'm only doing 10. I could do a whole hell of a lot more. Got several of them involving John Cena. I didn't even include here, for example. I didn't even talk about the fact that the Memphis Midcard piece of crap ever got a WrestleMania match. If I focused on the 10 most egregious. This is my 10. It doesn't have to be your 10. I don't give a shit about your 10. Well, I do. I'd like to see them. But if yours is different from mine, that's fine. I bet you we will have several of them in common. But here we go. My top 10 WrestleMania moments that still make me angry from 10 to 1. Starting with number 10, Dino Bravo gets not one, not two, not three, but four goddamn WrestleMania matches. Who's booking that crap? Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo got four WrestleMania matches. The fuck? Bang, bang. He's dead. Next, number nine, and how appropriate, WrestleMania 9. That whole show was an abomination and an abortion against WWE, professional wrestling, sports entertainment, whatever the blue hell you want to call it. No matter how much Bobby Heenan tried to save it with his greatness, there was no saving this shit show. From The Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez to Hulk Hogan freaking losing in a tag match with a goddamn shiner under his eye to, oh, get this, the ultimate. That doesn't work for me, brother. I got a great idea, brother. How about Brett after you lose, brother? You tell me to go after Yokozuna, brother. And then I go out there and I hit Yokozuna with the one, two, three, brother. And we send everybody home happy, brother. What a big bag of dicks and bullshit that was. And it is even worse 30 goddamn years later. The ultimate Hulk Hogan power play that was just absolute dog shit. WrestleMania 9. Number 8. Forcing Charlotte Flair into the WrestleMania 35 main event. There are several Charlotte Flair WrestleMania things I could have put on here. And Dinaska's undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Beating Rhea Ripley a few years ago for the NXT title. But forcing Charlotte Flair into that WrestleMania 35 main event spot to me is the most egregious. Because everything was pointing towards Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. That was the story. That's where the interest was. And of course, they had to fucking force in the female Randy Orton into this goddamn spot. And it ruined every goddamn thing. The bill got stupid and sideways afterwards. Of course, they did that whole dramatic dumb dick entrance with her coming for the fucking helicopter or whatever the hell it was. And the match stunk. They just couldn't help. But for Charlotte Flair into that fucking spot, even though there was absolutely no call for it, it ruined every fucking thing. And because it was yet another illustration to this company's obsession with forcing this botchy bitch down everybody's damn throats, that makes number eight on my list. Number seven, and this is for an entirely different reason, the Eddie Guerrero Chris Benoit hug at the end of WrestleMania 20. What should have went down is one of those truly iconic all-time WrestleMania moments is now ruined forever. Not only just the tragedy of Eddie Guerrero passing like a year and a half after that and having to be reminded of that. Obviously, everything that went down with Chris Benoit, he forgot to tell. <laughs> like that moment is ruined. What should have been one of the great memorable WrestleMania moments for all of my life should have been on the top WrestleMania moments list for myself and so many others. Yeah, it fucking pisses me off that that was ruined forever. Number six, Hulk Hogan versus The Rock, not main eventing WrestleMania 18. Imagine being the dumb dick in charge, not realizing, hey, we're going to sit there and build this as Babe Ruth versus Barry Bond, Muhammad Ali versus Mike Tyson. But let's put it in the mid-card, brother. 
Because we got to put Jericho versus God Uga in the goddamn main event. Like anybody there in Toronto wanted to see that shit. Know your circumstance, know your situation, know your environment. Know the history of Hogan in Canada. Know his propensity for drawing big box office in Canada. Know and understand the fan base and the history that he has in Canada, you stupid fucks. Not to mention that he was going to be going square up in a dream matchup against the hottest baby face in the company at the time, in the goddamn rock, and you don't main event that shit? I'll never forget the WWE for that stupidity. 21 years later, it still pisses me the fuck off. Next, number five. Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg at WrestleMania 20 and everything about that. There was a match heading into that show. You're like, my God, it's the next big thing. Brock Lesnar versus the Beast. You know, you're fucking talking about Goldberg here. Like, this looked like central casting WrestleMania main event type shit. It's in the garden, WrestleMania 20. Holy shit, Stone Cold Steve Austin is the damn special guest referee. How could this match not do all types of fucking and fucking and fucking? Oh, it fucked all right. It fucking sucked. Because before the match, the reports come out about Lesnar is going to leave because he wants to try the NFL. Goldberg's going to leave because his contract is up. And that match turned into a walking dumpster fucking fire where nobody in the ring wanted to be involved. Lester didn't want to do anything. Goldberg didn't want to do anything. Austin sure the hell didn't want to be there. The fans were so pissed off because they felt cheated and robbed. And almost 20 years later, I still feel cheated and robbed. It was one of the reasons I paid for that damn show back in 2004. And this was the bullshit I got. Fuck that match. Next, number four. Triple H beating Sting at WrestleMania 31. You spent decades, Vince McMahon, decades. I want to repeat that again. Decades trying to lure Sting away from WCW. Lure him away from TNA. You wanted Sting to be a part of WWE for decades. You finally get him to sign on the line that is dotted. You bring him in at Survivor Series and the fans go ballistic and you can feel it's the big huge moment. And you're like, well, of course he's got to go at fucking God because why wouldn't he? But hey, at least he's got a worthy WrestleMania opponent. But you're going to do this right, right? No, of course you fucking did it because Vince McMahon and his goddamn ego couldn't let history be history. He couldn't fucking let it go without sticking the needle in one more fucking time, a little more salt into the wounds about how WWE beat WCW. Had to sit there and make it about that shit. And you had Sting job out in his first WWE match to fucking Triple H at WrestleMania. What the fuck is wrong with you? You bring in Sting after all those years? And the first thing he's going to do is lose to God. Fuck that match. Number three. WrestleMania 17. What about it, you say? So much about that shit, that show, and what it fucking represents. That's what. All these nerds will sit there and talk about, oh, the matches were so great, it was fucking awesome. Gabe Meltzer told me it's the greatest WrestleMania ever, so of course I fucking believe him because I put way too much stock into what the hell he says. No, that show is bullshit. And any old school fan knows that show is bullshit. That represents the end of an era of professional wrestling. Dead R.I.P. No more ECW. No more WCW. And you want me to fucking be happy about that and celebrate that? Bullshit. And then to top it all off, the cherry on the top. Everything that the company had been about for years. Austin rebelling against McMahon, Austin and McMahon, Austin and McMahon. And now all of a sudden you get to WrestleMania 17. And you got Austin going in lockstep with goddamn McMahon. Stone Cold Steve Austin turning heel. Fuck that shit. I hate that fucking show. Because it also symbolizes a couple of months later the goddamn invasion angle. Which is the biggest wet fart in the history of professional wrestling. So now fuck that shit. Number two. And I gotta get my composure here and get a little water before I talk about this one. Because this one deserves it. Triple H beating Booker T at WrestleMania 19. 
There was no reason to do this. They did not have to do this. This felt personal. It felt kind of racial. At a minimum, it felt like another attempt, another excuse to bury fucking WCW. But when you look at some of the shit that went down in this feud, some of the references that Triple H made, oh, look at Mr. Blackface wearing dude himself a few years later is talking about the type of people Booker T is. And then you get to the fucking match, and it's not only so bad that Triple H went over Booker T here in the ultimate, the peak of what was the reign of God, ugh. But if you remember the way that finish went down, Triple H hits the finisher, and he takes fucking forever to claw, crawl over to Booker T and put the cover. It was sitting there basically to me saying, he's not even worthy, he's not on this level, he's like a servant compared to me. That's the way it came across to me, I'm sure it's the way it came across to others. To this day, this shit still fucking pisses me off, as you can tell, gets me worked the hell up. That should have been a spot for Booker T for a company that had so little representation in terms of non-white world champions. Here was a perfect fucking chance for you to do the right thing and you went with God instead. Fuck that match. Fuck that WrestleMania 19. But of course, you know me. You knew there was only one. And I mean only one option. Only one answer. For the WrestleMania moment that still pisses me off the most all these years later. And that was Brock Lesnar ending the goddamn Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30. Typical Vince McMahon reactionary bullshit. Why did you do it? Oh, oh, because, because I felt like it. Which is the dumbest fucking reason of all. Instead of throwing it to Roman or somebody else that you would actually use, use that for years. That it would benefit the talent for years. You throw it on the one guy. The one guy that it made no fucking sense. The one guy that wasn't going to get a lift out of it. The one guy. The one guy that you could saddle that with and get a minimum return out of it. It's bad enough you ended the Undertaker streak. The shit should have just ended at WrestleMania 28. 20 and 0. Fucking end of an era match. Never do it again. But then to know that you come back, you have another match, and then you come here... At 21 to know, like, the number doesn't even make any goddamn sense. And you have Brock Lesnar be the one in 21 and 1. Look at how many fans you fucking ran away from your biggest show of the year because one of the reasons they would still watch is because of fucking Undertaker. And what makes it even worse is Taker would still wrestle several more years. Making the whole ending the streak shit seem ridiculous and stupid because now Undertaker's wrestling at Mania and he doesn't have the streak. What's the fucking point? If you're going to end it, then end the Taker character, period. Instead, you persisted because of course you fucking did. But of all the people to have end the streak, goddamn Brock Lesnar was the stupidest possible decision. And it wasn't well thought out. And you've heard Taker talk about it after the fact. He didn't think Brock needed it. He didn't think he was the right guy because he's fucking right. Because it's stupid. So all the fans that will talk about WrestleMania 30, yes, 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 it was awesome because of Daniel Bryan having his moment in the sun. I say, fuck that shit. Yeah, but that's when the streak ended. That shit is what we will always remember about WrestleMania 30. That shit sucked. And that, to me is the WrestleMania moment above all others, lots of other worthy contenders, that still pisses me off the most all these years later.